Ultimately, evolutionary biology give, gives rise to profound adaptations because mutation is followed by natural selection, which is followed by mutation, which is followed by natural selection, and so on. As a consequence, naturally selected uh, mutations uh, tend to arise in the population in a sequential manner uh, such that adaptations improve over time. Two concepts that uh, follow this uh, improvement of adaptation over time are those of parallel evolution and convergent evolution. And these are simply aspects of uh, what presumably in both cases is adaptive evolution. In parallel evolution, you have two lineages that started out essentially as the same. A speciation event has occurred or otherwise separation of the two um, uh, gene pools such that uh, you have independent evolution going on. But in parallel evolution, uh, that evolution that's going on basically is very similar, if not identical. On a molecular level, you have replacement of nucleotides with the same nucleotides at the same position, uh, but as a consequence of independent mutation events. In convergent evolution, instead what you have are two separate lineages that are not identical at the beginning, but become more similar over time as a consequence of mutation and um, adaptation. Uh, in this case, uh, if it's on a molecular level, you have nucleotides entering into sequences, uh, uh, changes in nucleotides that in fact are similar uh, between the two lineages, uh, but again as a consequence of independent mutations. Once again, the way evolution works, the way adaptation works, the way Darwinian evolution works is you have mutations uh, that are selected for increase in frequency within a population. Within that population, you have additional mutations that in, in are selected for further and so on and so forth, so that you have a building up of adaptations within a population, but all of these adaptations ultimately can be traced to a series of random mutations.